Britain is home to thousands of species, from tiny insects to large land mammals. These, along with the vast number of visitors to these shores every year, means that the wildlife landscape is constantly changing throughout the year. With each passing season showcasing the truly amazing world of Britain's wildlife. March is the month that normally signals the start of spring, with longer days and slowly climbing temperatures. But a sudden stratospheric warming, or SSW weather event, dubbed by the media as the beast from the east, hit the UK and saw temperatures plummet and heavy snowfall. In Hull's East Park, Almost all of the winter visitors had left before the beast arrived. Only a few gadwall remain. Seen all year round in Britain, they only spend the winter months on East Park's man-made lake. As the weather worsens, the water temperature drops to near freezing. The lake's waterfowl, however, don't seem to be affected by the dropping temperatures. This is because they have a counter-current heat exchange system to help protect them from the freezing water. In the waterfowl's legs, the arteries and veins run parallel, close together. So as warm blood travels from the body to their feet, the blood cools due to the blood coming back up to the body in a closely parallel vein. This means that when the blood reaches the feet, it is a similar temperature to the surrounding water, preventing heat loss, while the blood going back to the body warms up due to the warm blood travelling alongside down to the feet, keeping the animal's core temperature up. They also have a uropygial or preen gland located near the base of their tail. This gland secretes an oily substance which the waterfowl rub all over their feathers making themselves essentially waterproof and further helping them to withstand the cold. This is especially helpful for divers such as tufted duck, who spend a lot of time underwater, looking for food such as mussels, shrimp and other crustaceans. Spring is also the time of year where animals develop their summer or breeding plumage. The great crested grebe, another diver, has changed from its grey and white winter plumage to a browner body with an elaborate chestnut coloured frill around its head. They usually pair in winter and breed during the first half of the year. On East Park's vast lake, their nests are almost always hidden along the edge of one of the lake's islands, making it very difficult to see from the water's edge. This little grebe has also developed its breeding plumage, but being the only one on the lake, it may have to move on from the lake to find a mate. Numbers are not a problem, however, for the most common bird on the lake, the black-headed gull. Called so because in the spring they develop a dark coloured hood, although it is more chocolate brown than black. The hood disappears after the summer months, leaving the bed with just a couple of small dark patches around the eyes. This small colony stays on the lake year round, with plenty of nesting sites and the abundant food source on both land and water throughout the year make East Park the perfect habitat for these resident birds. A stone's throw from the lake, a small gaggle of grey lag geese forage for grass on a snow-covered field. Because the snow is not too deep, the grey lags look for exposed grass or simply move the snow to get to the grass underneath. Grey lag geese mate for life. These geese have already paired up, 
and in the coming weeks, as the weather improves, will start to begin nesting on or around the lake. Near to the field is a small wooded area which is usually alive with the sound of birdsong and the presence of grey squirrels. But due to the sudden temperature drop, they are nowhere to be seen or heard. In these weather conditions, squirrels will often stay in their drays, only coming out now and again for food. The small garden beds that frequent this area are surprisingly absent too. Only a few larger birds can be seen in the trees. To stay warm during this weather event, birds will hunker down and fluff out their feathers to trap pockets of air to warm with their body heat, acting as a layer of insulation. They will also tuck their heads in to further protect themselves from the cold weather. Over the next several days, the snow will slowly disappear, the weather will improve and temperatures will start to climb once more. These SSW weather events occur fairly regularly, every couple of years in fact. Not all of them however affect Britain's weather, but when they do and the weather changes dramatically, Britain's beds whether they are garden beds or waterfowl, show a resilience to adapt and deal with drastic changes to their ever-changing environments.